Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I make one of my favorite meals. It is the slow cooker chicken teriyaki and it requires less than five minutes to throw together and only five ingredients. I love using the slow cooker because it packs in all the flavor without excess oil and sugar and salt and all of those nasties. So it's definitely a good way to go. It's great because you can just throw all the ingredients in, go to sleep and wake up the next morning and have delicious and nutritious meals for the rest of the week. So let's get into the recipe. So the first thing we do is add high quality extra virgin olive oil to the pan. I just put a little bit only just for some flavor and to grease the bottom of it. I then add my protein of choice, which I'm gonna use lean chicken breast today. You can use any lean meats that you like or even tofu if you're vegan. I then add one third of a cup of organic tamari or soy sauce. I always try and use organic soy whenever possible because that is one of the highest GMO foods in the world. So put that in the pan. And then I add some hoisin sauce. So you can find this in any supermarket or Asian grocer and I add half a cup of that and it adds some really nice flavor. Hoisin sauce is a fermented soybean sauce and it is incredibly delicious. I always try and look for one that's preservative free also. And finally, I add a lot of minced garlic that is great for your immune system and of course, lots of flavor. I then turn the slow cooker on for about eight hours. So you can just leave it on the night before and go to sleep and wake up and be ready. No effort required at all. And then for my carb sauce, I'm gonna add some quinoa. It's really high in protein and fiber. So I'm actually gonna weigh mine out because I don't wanna eat too much of it. So I like to slightly undercook the quinoa. So for me, that's about 10 minutes on a medium heat. Then I grab my cauliflower rice. I like to just get the frozen one. It's super convenient and it's already rice, but if you have fresh cauliflower, just rice it in a food processor until it is that rice texture. And then I stir that through the quinoa and you don't even taste it at all. And it's a great way of adding fiber and nutrients and volume to your meals. I then season it with this Himalayan salt, lemon zest, and black pepper grinder. Super simple and delicious. You can also stir through some curry powder. That would be really nice as well. I then toast some sesame seeds for some extra flavor too. This takes about a minute, so make sure you keep an eye on it. So roughly about halfway through, I like to turn over the chicken as well. So it coats and marinates the chicken evenly. And then to prepare the vegetables, you can use any vegetables you like, but I'm just gonna use some fresh broccoli. And as you can see, I just grab the middle and rotate it and that is a super easy way to slice your broccoli and then I also like them a bit more smaller so I do rip them apart as well through the stem and that creates much less of a mess and do not throw away the stalks because that is one of the most nutrient rich parts of the broccoli I also add some frozen green beans about 15 minutes before the whole thing is ready so the chicken is now super juicy and cooked through. I like to shred it and as you can see, it just falls apart. It is perfectly deliciously moist and cooked. Uh, you can also slice it if you like, but I prefer to shred it. I think it looks better and it's funner to eat. So this is a totally optional step, but I totally recommend it if you have a couple of minutes to spare. Over a high heat pan, I like to add the liquid sauce. From the chicken into the pan and I let that reduce and boil just until it's nice and thick. You can also add a tablespoon of cornstarch or tapioca starch to a little bowl and then add some of the soy sauce mixture into that bowl to make a slurry and then add it back into the pot that will help even make it more thick and a beautiful creamy texture to pour over the chicken. Then just set that aside and let that cool and you can also use a blender to make it even more smooth and to even out any lumps that may have occurred. So now we can finally get to the fun part which is assembling our delicious meal prep into containers. I prefer to use glass when possible. I like to start with a bed of fresh green spinach followed by the cauliflower quinoa mixture on top, then the green vegetables and then finally our deliciously slow roasted lean chicken breast which is a great source of protein on top of all of that. Drizzled with that really thick rich teriyaki sauce with no preservatives or nasties and then topped with toasted sesame seeds and freshly sliced green onions. I am literally feeling so hungry watching this and editing this. I cannot wait for you guys to try this and hear what you think. 
so don't forget to let them cool before you put the cover on it and then put it in your refrigerator I leave out enough meals for two days so four meals in the fridge and then I freeze up the rest of the containers and then whenever I want to eat them I just defrost it the night before in the fridge and then just warm it up in the microwave and it's literally as simple as that it is such an easy and delicious way to enjoy a high protein lower carb meal full of nutrients so this is not only an incredible meal for a weekday it's also an amazing one for entertaining your loved ones such as your partner your friends your family i guarantee they will all be impressed by this meal and how few ingredients you need to prepare it i also like to serve a bit of smashed avocado on the side and top it with some extra coriander because i think that herb makes everything taste better i don't care what people say it is the best herb ever <laughs> Thanks so much guys for watching. I really hope you try this recipe at home. It's definitely one of my favorite meal preps to have on rotation. I don't know about you guys, but I always order the teriyaki dish when I go to Asian restaurants. And what I didn't realize before I did any research was how much sugar and oils and preservatives and just nasty ingredients and poor quality ingredients that they put into the pre-made sauces. So that's why I really wanted to give you guys a clean version that you can make at home that's delicious and nutritious. Nutritious. So if you do find this recipe useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this that really supports me. Thank you so much again. Bye.